Well, I love the rain in that Cause I should be the sight I love to feel the rain on my face Cause the rain on my face Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It's November 21st, 2024. Great to be with all of you today. My name is Bob Lang, and it's time for our Daily Bites, which we bring to you every Monday and Thursday morning. Um, so markets, um, pretty strong here, right? Big rally so, so far this morning on the NASDAQ, 112 points. Dow Industrial is up 225. Um, wiping out some of those losses from earlier in the week. It was actually um, up. Uh, the best uh, average yesterday on Wednesday. Uh, S&P 500 squeaked out a gain yesterday by um, by a few pennies. So it's a, it's on a three-day winning streak. And it looks like that may extend today. S&P 500 futures are up about 32 handles. S&P futures pushing their way towards 6,000. Now you see over here the S&P cash closed yesterday at 59.17. We're about uh, 83 handles away from the magic 6,000 mark, which we hit last week um, before the markets uh, tumbled on Thursday and Friday um, for a bit of a correction. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at that chart in a couple of minutes here. But um, what I wanted to share with you today, so far so good if you're bullish. Amazon's up a little bit, the SPY pushing up to 593. Uh, Tesla up a little bit. Netflix re uh, resuming its big rally um, yesterday. We had a big winner with uh, William Sonoma, and that's uh, continuing on today, moving forward. Um, what are the big winners so far this morning? Snowflake, of course, up $31, up about 24%, big mover. Um, stock that we've been in, uh, call that we've been in uh, for a couple of weeks now, since last week, AAOI, um, up another two and a half dollars, up towards 36.50. I did mention out on uh twitter and stock twits and even on our chat room um that i thought that uh aoi was probably going to make a run towards 40. that was when it was about 29 30 bucks it's right right near there right now so we're we're in a lot of calls in this uh in this name too it's doing really nicely nvidia posted earnings last night and it is shooting higher today so anybody who um added some stock in that stupid dumb sell-off uh, last night in the in the after hours, I always tell people, don't pay attention to what's happening in the after hours. Pay attention to what's happening when the markets open up. Real time hours um, are going to be coming in at about 50 minutes from now, and and I expect that um, Nvidia is going to be popping through 150 bucks um, before too long. So, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the big thing that everybody's been talking about since the election, and certainly it's the past month and a half. I think Bitcoin's up about um, I want to say about 80 uh, percent. Uh, over the past four to five months. And uh, certainly since the election, it's up about 30%. A huge move in uh, in cryptocurrency. Bitcoin's almost to 100,000 per coin. So um, that uh, that is extremely impressive, but a lot of people are making money. MicroStrategy, uh, MSTR, these guys just continue to print money. Um, stocks up another $71 today. Uh, it was up to uh, 473. Um, saw some wild call buying on the 700 strike, 700 uh, uh, yesterday. So we'll see if that uh, makes a run towards that level um, between today and tomorrow. Um, this morning we had earnings that came out from Baidu, which were good, but you know the, the stock is down a little bit. PDD, formerly Pinduo Duo, off eleven dollars here. Big huge drop down. Um, Apple's up a little bit over here. So um, technology names are doing doing nicely. Um, tonight we'll have earnings from Intuit, I N T U, coming out. Elastic, E S T C, Gap. Ross Stores, which is a name that I like. I have some of that um, ROST. Um, take a look at that one um, later on today. Um, should do well off of the good numbers from TJ Maxx and also from Walmart and the poor numbers from Target. So, um, And then tomorrow we have a couple of other smaller names like Global Blue um, and ADEX. So um, let's take a look at the couple of charts here for you. I want to look at the Russell 2000, right? The Russell 2000 IWM shares. Now, why is this important here? Well, I've been looking at this one for the past, you know, four or five days. I wanted to see how it um, 
worked around the 20 day moving average. And we can see this 20 day moving average here is this dotted line, right? And if you go back to um, early September, when it broke through that 20 day moving average, hit the 100 and bounced right back up, and it was uh, flirting around that area, we, had a, we have a huge gap higher above that 20 day moving average. So that's important to me, right? Why is it important? Because that, um, in and of itself will act as support going forward and certainly that um so keep that in mind uh, keep that in the back of your mind when you see a gap up over say the 20 day moving average the 10 day or the 30 day moving average or something like that you will often see that uh index or stock use that average as good support um going going forward and of course it was it was moving higher uh at the at the time and that trajectory towards the upside is also helpful to the to continue that trend so we gap up above there we came back down tested that 20-day moving average here in early october bounced again failed uh to deliver a um a higher high because back in july we had that big shot higher we failed to, to close above there but we came back down and tested the 20-day moving average and also the 50-day moving average which was coming in close to that 20-day moving average we tested both of those areas and we gapped up right after the election and shot real high and then got really overbought and we were due for a pullback and we got that in the last week week and a half right so i wanted to see how the russell 2000 um did around this 20 day moving average i wanted to see if that for the fourth time it was going to bounce off that level and sure enough it looks like that's happening right now so i'm interested in buying this iwm here even though it did um it did bounce off this 20 day moving average i didn't catch the lows that's not my mo i'm not looking for lows to jump in i'm not looking for tops to get out what i'm looking for is uh to to see that if that level holds firm and then where we go from there right so i think we can go we can make a higher high on this one we got to get above 243 right so we're at 230 right now that's about at least a 12 13 point move if we get up to past this 243, we're going to make a run towards 250 to 255 on the IWM. Okay. When's it going to happen? I don't know. So um, my point is um, finding a location first, then giving myself enough time to make it there that's reasonable. Now, say a move to 250, 255 is about an, an 8% move. Is that going to happen in five days? Probably not. Right, you don't have the catalyst like you had with the election uh, and the Fed meeting a couple weeks ago to drive the index that high in such a short period of time. Plus, volatility is still rather low. You look at the RVX, which is the Russell Volatility Index; it's it's been coming down. So, um, my plan would be give it a couple of months, maybe January, maybe February, right? to get to those levels. Or if I really wanted to um, play shorter term, maybe uh, the monthly calls in December, but something closer into, uh, into the strike, into the current price to make it reasonable and um, logical and practical and probable that we're gonna get to that, that strike. So maybe with the uh, IWM sitting about 231 right now, I might buy like the 232 or the 233 strike, go out a whole month. If I'm deciding to go with January or February, what I may do is I may go with a, um, I don't know, make it 235 or 236 strike, give it a little bit of, of, of room, let it stretch out a little bit and um, not have to put a lot of capital out there, right? Options give you a lot of leverage. Not have to put a lot of capital out there, but still have a play out there that where I think if it hits my target, say 250, 255, those calls are going to pay off nicely. So um, that's my um, that's my plan with the IWM, and um, I always have the um, uh, opportunity and chance to make that play or change my mind. Right? You always have a chance to to change your mind depending on the, on the situation and the conditions. So let's take a look at another chart here. I want to take a look at the U.S two-year treasury yield right and we see that that yield we, we we looked at this one a few weeks ago um it's been pushing up higher towards that 200-day moving average the yield is bullish right which is bearish for bonds right when the yields are pushing up that means bond yields are uh bond yields are coming up that means the the actual price of the bonds are coming down um they work inverse right 
So um, that um, that huge move in yield isn't stopping right now. So now, but if it does come down, yield comes down, breaks this 20-day moving average, which we talked about the 20 a moment ago. Um, two days ago, we tested that that 20-day moving average, but bounced right back up again. If we come back down below that 4.2 level, um, then we then we know that um, uh, the, the uptrend has been broken, and we could come back down and test some of these lower levels, maybe about 4% two year. But I'm getting out of myself. Let's not uh, do that and just wait and see how it, how it all plays out. Um, so the S&P 500 here, I'm going to show you an uh, interesting chart. So I looked at the six-minute chart from yesterday. And look at how in the first well, about 45 to 60 minutes, the S&P 500 made its low yesterday and just started climbing back, right? Catching some buyers on all the dips, right? And uh, towards the end of the day, we had a nice rally up towards the uh, end of the day. And then into uh, this morning, we're, we're rallying up. Let's see what the uh, that daily chart looks like now. You can see that we're, we're, we're pushing up here. Um, we're going to be pushing up. This, but this is actually not showing the pre-market. But this is a very strong uh, market trend right here. When we're blue or teal, that is bullish or cautiously bullish. We've been that color since that, about the early part of September. So two and a half months, almost three months, right? It's a bullish trend. That's all you need to know, right? And and you, you play the markets accordingly. And what does that mean? That means have some protection on. Yes, have some protection and have some puts on. It will help you become a better buyer, a more uh, uh, focused buyer, of calls if you have puts on, right? I know that sounds antithetical, but having that protection on for me, hopefully for you, helps you buy more calls uh, down the road, right? Knowing you have that protection on just in case the market falls apart, um, you know you can you can you know you can buy some calls um, uh, going going forward. So have some protection on, have a lot of cash, be ready for whatever the market is going to uh, deliver to you on the next move. Is it up, is it down? You don't care, as long as it's moving, right? If it's down, you're gonna play some puts. If it's up, you're gonna play calls, right? So it's it's a good environment right now. I think liquidity is 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 actually rather poor. So people who are short this market are getting are getting drilled, are getting pounded. Um, but you know what, we, we look at the, the charts, we pay attention to what the trend is doing, we look at the momentum, and the money flows, and we make a decision. We make a choice and say, okay, the market is favorable right now for, for, for playing um, the upside, for instance. Um, and and that's what we do. So, um, I think it's going to be it, everyone. Have a wonderful day. I saw we uh, actually before we run. Um, I saw we had some uh, economic data this morning. Let's take a look at that. Uh, we saw Philly Fed came in. Um, Fairly good, fairly strong. New orders, not so good. Philly Fed prices paid better. CapEx, uh, pretty good. Philly Fed business conditions, real good for November. Um, the manufacturing index, actually the net came in at a minus five. Um, that is poor. Um, uh, jobless claims came in a little bit lighter than expected at 213,000. Um, we'll have um, three Fed speakers later on today. Consumer Confidence coming out, uh, uh, leading index, U.S. leading at Consumer Conference from Europe coming out, existing home sales coming out at 10 o'clock Eastern time, leading index as well, too. And we'll have some Consumer Confidence numbers tomorrow on Friday, along with uh, a couple more Fed speakers as well. So it's going to be a busy, um, it's going to be a busy day. It's going to be a, a busy time for the next couple of days. We also, don't forget, have a short week next week. We have uh, the Bites coming up on Monday, but we won't have anything on Thursday because, of course, because it's Thanksgiving. Markets will be closed on that day, a uh, week from today, which is the 28th. And then the 29th, it'll be a short trading day, only uh, three and a half hours to make it all happen. So wish you guys all a, a great trading day. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. Please uh, share this with anybody that you like. We have some Black Friday sales coming up starting next Friday on the 29th uh, for the uh, – uh, for anybody who is not in our services right now, it's going to be a nice combo uh, price for uh, the chat room and the swing trader, which, by the way, um, 
nearly a milestone right here. I'm really, really happy and proud of, of, of our performance so far in 2024. I want you guys all to take a look at this, right? Bam. Okay. Here's the performance of our portfolio. We were up almost 2% yesterday, up 3.27 for the week for the first three days of the week. We're up 17 and a quarter percent for the month. The S&P 500 up 3.87. Decent, but we're five times better than that. Almost five times better. Year to date, portfolio is up 49.55%. The S&P is up 24. We have lapped the S&P 500 by 100%. Up 24, we're up 49. So what's the significance of 49%? Well, we, we only use about no more than say up to 24% of the portfolio for positions. Currently right now we're at about 12. So we have about 88% in sitting in cash earning basically on this portfolio zero, right? Um, I'm gonna try and uh, get that fixed next year where we can earn some, uh, earn, earn say uh, money markets 4% on the cash. But as it is right now, we're not earning anything. So we have 12% of the portfolio driving all the performance right so if you think about a two percent performance yesterday that was if you inter think of terms of return on risk it was probably close to about eight percent yesterday of the portfolio that's being used it's a huge number right fourteen thousand dollar gain um on a portfolio that's only using about uh eighty thousand dollars it's a huge move huge percentage gain so um we're really happy and proud of our performance off of 2023. We're up almost 35%, uh, coming back with another almost a 50% year. So, um, you know, we have some positions still open right now, like AOI, Apple, um, Chewy, and some of these other names over here. And we do have some protection on. Spy and QQQ puts get killed, but that's okay. We're fine with that. You know, that's that's just that's just how we roll. That's, that's the role that those... Um, puts are playing in our portfolio and we have a lot of cash. So um, if you're having, if you're waiting to, to come on in, I think the Black Friday sale is a great opportunity for you to jump in with our chat room and with our swing trading service. So um, with that, I'm going to leave it there. Have a great, wonder, uh, great weekend. I will see you guys all back on Monday. Um, little um, Eddie Rabbit before we leave. Starting to rain here. New England. Have a great weekend.